Before going forward in this video, please make sure that you have watched the last part of this video. So now let's get a start our new chapter. Why people can change? Youth. First, let's plan the points of discussion. You say people can change, then you take it a step further, saying that everyone can find happiness. Philosopher. Yes, everyone without exception. Youth. Let's save the discussion about happiness for later and address change the first. Everyone wishes they could change. I know, I do. And I am sure anyone you might stop and ask on the street would agree. But why does everyone feel they want to change? There is only one answer, because they cannot change. If it were easy for people to change, they would not spend so much time wishing they could, no matter how much they wish it. People cannot change and that's why there are always so many people getting taken in by new religions and debuish self-help seminars and any preaching on how everyone can change. Am I wrong? Philosopher, well, in response, I had asked why you are so adamant that people cannot change. Youth, here is why. I have a friend, a guy, who has shut himself in his room for several years. He wishes he could go out and even thinks he had liked to have a job, if possible, so he wants to change the way he is. I say this as his friend, but I assure you he is a very serious person who could be of great use of society except that he is afraid to leave his room. If he takes even a single step outside, he suffers palpitations and his arms and legs shake. It is a kind of nourishes or panic. I suppose he wants to change, but he cannot. Philosopher, what do you think the reason is that he cannot go out? Youth, I am not really sure. It could be because of his relationship with his parents or because he was bullied at school or work. He might have experienced a kind of trauma from something like that. But then it could be the opposite. Maybe he was too pampered as a child and cannot face reality. I just don't know and I cannot pray into his past or his family situation. Philosopher, so you are saying there were incidents in your friend's past that become the cause of trauma or something similar. And as a result, he cannot go out anymore. Youth. Of course, before an effect, there is a cause. There is nothing mysterious about that. Philosopher, then perhaps the cause of his not being able to go out anymore lies in the home environment during his childhood. He was abused by his parents and reached adulthood without ever feeling love. That's why he is afraid of interacting with people and why he cannot go out. It's feasible, is not it? Youth, yes, it's entirely feasible. I had imagined that would be really challenging. Philosopher, and then you say, before an effect, there is a cause. Or in other words, who I am now, the effect is determined by occurrence in the past. The causes, do I understand correctly? Youth, you do. Philosopher, so if the here and now of everyone in the world is due to their past incidents, according to you, would not things turn out very strangely? Don't you see, everyone who has grown up abused by his or her parents would have to suffer the same effect as your friends and become a recluse, or the whole idea just does not hold water. That is, if the past actually determines the present and the causes control the effects, youth, what exactly are you getting at? Philosopher, if we focus only on past causes and try to explain things solely through cause and effect, we end up with determinism. Because what this says is that our present and our future have already been decided by past occurrence and are unalterable. Am I wrong? Youth, you are saying that the past does not matter? Philosopher, yes, that is the standpoint of Adler in psychology. Youth, I see the points of conflict seems a bit clear, but look if we go by your vision. Would not that ultimately mean that there is no reason my friend cannot go out anymore? Because you are saying that past incidents don't matter. I am sorry, but that's completely out of the question. There has to be some reason behind his seclusion. There has to be or there had been no explanation. Philosopher. Indeed, there would be no explanation. So, in Adler in psychology, we do not think about past causes, but rather about present goals. Youth, present goals, philosopher, 
Your friend is insecure so he cannot go out. Think about it. The other way around. He does not want to go out so he is creating a state of anxiety. Youth. Haha. <laughs> Philosopher. Think about it. This way, your friend had the goal of not going out beforehand and he's been manufacturing a state of anxiety and fear as a means to achieve that goal. In Adler in psychology, this is called teleology. Youth, you are joking. My friend has imagined his anxiety and fear. So, would you go so far as saying that my friend is just pretending to be sick? Philosopher, he is not pretending to be sick. The anxiety and fear your friend is feeling are real. On occasion, he might also suffer from migraines and violent stomach cramps. However, these two are symptoms that he has created in order to achieve the goal of not going out. Youth, that's not true. No way, that's too depressing. Philosopher, no, this is the difference between etiology, the study of causation, and teleology, the study of purpose of given phenomenon rather than its cause. Everything you have been telling me is based in antiology. As long as we stay in antiology, we will not take a single step forward. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please make sure that you have pressed the subscribe button so that you will get more videos from this channel.